As a public defender, Judge Karen fought for her client's rights. She was elected to the bench because she believes in doing the right thing. I'm very passionate about helping people, period. Sometimes life pulls you from up here to down here to teach you a lesson. And you're in a valley right now. And there are lessons in this valley. I hope you learn from them. Objective, independent justice. You can always turn your life around. If you keep walking, you can overcome whatever circumstances you're facing. This is Supreme Justice with Judge Karen. Larry Graham is suing fellow churchgoer Nancy Behrens in the amount of $250. Mr. Graham claims the defendant's son threw a baseball at his car and smashed his windshield and says Ms. Behrens refuses to pay for the repairs. Ms. Behrens claims the plaintiff's son shares the blame for the accident and says when she tried to reason with Mr. Graham, he was verbally abusive in front of their congregation. All rise. Raise your right hands, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give before this court should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Yes. Court is now in session with the Honorable Judge Karen Mills Francis presiding. You may be seated. All parties have been sworn in, Your Honor. All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Graham, you're suing Ms. Behrens for $250? That's correct. For a broken windshield? Yes. All right, so you two belong to the same church? Yes, we do. Okay. We go to church every Saturday. So do you know each other from church? Pretty much, yes. Her, you know, my son and her son play together a lot, you know. Okay, and, Are they go, do you guys go to the same school? or? No, we do not. We just know each other from church. You just yeah. know each other from church. So you see each other every Saturday? Yes. Correct. At church. And then you boys, um, how long have you been friendly with each other? About like three, four months I met him. Oh, okay. And so you play ball outside the church? Yeah, we yeah. usually bring a baseball and we play catch like outside by there's like a like a patch of grass out there and we just throw a ball there. All right. So what happened this particular day? So this particular day, uh, day rather, uh, I was sitting in my car, right, and you know he was playing catch with uh, his friend, my, you know. Okay. And all of a sudden, his friend basically threw the ball and it was far off and it just hit my windshield and it just shattered it. And right. at that point you I saw was, that? Exactly, so you saw yes. The ball I saw it on my own eyes. Yes, I was sitting in the car. Okay. Correct. Did anybody bring me a diagram so I can understand oh. how this uh, church is set up and where these boys were throwing a baseball? Were you hitting a baseball? Are you playing catch with a mitt and everything? Yeah, yeah. we were just playing catch. Uh, well, you're giving me a picture of your broken windshield. Yes, that's correct. Right, but I asked about a diagram of the church grounds. Don't have that handy right, right now? Right, were you playing in the parking lot? Yes. yes. Okay, and when you, do you normally play in the parking lot? Yeah. There's this little patch of grass between the church and the parking lot, and that's uh -huh. where the ball. I need somebody to draw this for me. Who, which one do you want to draw? You want to draw it for me? Sure. Okay, can you give him, do we have a piece of paper? Yeah, yeah I have some paper. Hand him this paper. I want a picture of the church, the parking lot, and where you guys were throwing the ball. Okay, so um, are you, uh, you, while he's doing that, so are you, uh, are you on any committees in the church or are you just a church goers? You guys I'm, just go to mass every Saturday. Um, every, every Saturday I every go to Saturday. church with him on mass. You know. Okay, so the day that this thing happened, when the, when the, the ball came through, yeah. what happened? Okay, so we usually play ball every Saturday when they come because our parents like to go early for some reason right. and we just have to kill time. Right. And so we were playing catch and then he throws it, but it goes really far off and it goes right. into my dad's windshield. Right. And next thing well, I know... But how far away was your dad's car from where you were playing catch? It was about like 15 feet. 15 feet? Yeah. So was it as close as the bailiff is to you or closer? Uh, a little further. It was further. Was yeah. that further than 15 feet then? Oh, right, about, yeah. Okay, was it about this distance between you and the bailiff? Yeah, about. Okay, so dad's car is about where Chris the bailiff is, and you guys were throwing about where you're standing yeah. now. Okay. And no other kids get involved in this, even though you guys do this every Saturday. We tell all the little kids no. Oh, the yeah. little kids say, can yeah. we play? And you goes, no, you're too little, you can't play now. Yeah. Okay, and whose ball is it? Uh, it's his. 
And whose mint is it? Oh, we both have mints. Okay, so you both come with your mint. All right, so then when he, you finished drawing yes. for me? Okay, can I see the drawing? Okay, so I'm seeing the church, the front door of the church, the grass, the parking lot. But you didn't show me on here where you were throwing the ball and where the plaintiff's car was parked. Oh. Okay, so just mark on here now. He's, and, and take a look at this and see if you agree that that, that represents the scene. Okay. Where he showed, no, um, Chris, let the plaintiff see that first. Do you agree mm -hmm. that that picture is a, is a pretty good representation of the church, the parking lot, the grass? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Looks, now, on that diagram, right. on that diagram, I'd like you to put a big X where you were standing throwing the ball and then put okay. a, another X where his car was parked. Maybe you should write car. Show that to the uh, plaintiff, Chris, please. All right, so he's marked this document. Do you agree, Jerry? Do you agree that that's basically where the car was yeah, that's and where, where you was. guys were? Okay. Yeah. Coming up on Supreme Justice. She sees me confronting her son. Right. And Grabbing my son. Did you grab him? I gently grabbed him by the wrist just to, you know, confront him about the situation. Right. I, my intent was to not really be aggressive like that or right. to hurt him or anything. And later. So you gave him this order. Yes. Okay, so what went wrong with the order? The phone number um, on the business card, uh -huh. it was the wrong number. You put um, the wrong number down on the card. Supreme Justice is back with the case of Larry Graham, who is suing Nancy Behrens for property damage. All right, so after your, your wind, windshield got cracked, what did you do? So basically, I was pretty heated about it. I was upset, you know, so yeah, being that he was fearful that I was probably going to hurt him, which I was. My intent was to not hurt him. What was your intent? My intent was to just confront him about the situation. Be like, listen, look at what you did. Right. Couldn't you have been more careful? Listen, that, blah, blah, blah. You know, so he ran inside the church. So I basically was trying to run after him just to confront him about the situation. Right. And what was your son when you were running after this boy? I guess he was just outside, scared. You know, he didn't know what okay. to do. Okay. Had church started? Had the mass started? It was going to start in like five, ten minutes. Yeah. It was okay. Just before mass had All started. All right. So you go in. The services are going on, and then what happens? And then basically, she realized what's go what what's going on, and Ms. Barons. Oh, sorry. No, Ms. Barons is the she. Yeah, yeah. Okay. She realizes that you know, she sees me confronting her son. Right. And Grabbing my son. Did you grab him? I. Gently grabbed him by the wrist just to, you know, confront him about the situation. Right. I, my intent was to not really be aggressive like that or right. to hurt him or anything. Right. You know, but she kind of like over exaggerated and made it seem like I was going to viciously attack him. Right. You chased him and grabbed him. Yeah. What did he do? Let me hear from you, Miss Barons. How did so, he? How did he grab him? So use your son as an example. How did he grab him? He came up and grabbed his arm and squeezed. Right. And jarred him. And then what did you do? I confronted him and. First, I told him to get his hands off my son. Right. And then he continued to berate and chastise me in front of our entire congregation. What was he saying? He was saying that you are an irresponsible parent. Right. You're not Which teaching your child doing. any accountability for right. his actions. Right. And essentially telling me how horrible a mother I was you in front of everyone. You were doing this inside a church that y'all go to every Saturday? I was trying what to are y'all learning yes, in church? Was. I was trying to avoid that from happening, Your Honor. But, you know. But you just, grabbed the boy inside the church. I understand that. My intent, what, all I want is my, you know, windshield to be paid for. I was right. trying to just confront him. I wasn't trying to hurt him or to, my intent was to not hurt him or anything. He ran okay. inside the church because he was in fear so, for. So do we still go to this church? No, we do not, Your Honor. So now you stop going to church we after 13 church. years? Yes. So, Your Honor, what happened after that was I tried to reason with him, tried to say, at one point I said, we can pay for the windshield. It's right. an accident. We can handle it. Right. But he just kept yelling and berating us, so at some point we had to walk away. And at that point, no. he said, you will pay that money for your son or else. Right. She's just exactly And after he, after he grabbed my son and berated us in front of the congregation, I just didn't feel safe being around him anymore. Right. Um, Did anybody in the congregation come up and say, brothers, sisters, we are here in the house of the Lord? <laughs> 
Where no. is the love? Nobody came. I, I didn't. This, this church you've been going to every Saturday for 13 yeah. years, and nobody came. The priests, the parishioners, nobody came. There were some people that came outside. I mean, to, to try to, to, to talk you, you know, talk you through this, talk was, you out of it. I was trying to, you know, alleviate the situation by right. trying to talk to him. My right. intent was to not, you know, make a scene, but he right. was scared for his life as if I was like a, a madman, exactly, you know, or right. something. And right. then she's exaggerating the whole situation. Scared it wasn't for like his life. That. Scared okay, for well, his life as you, if, you, you know, you as if me, they don't know you me. You showed know? me this pic. You all agreed that this was a diagram. Yeah, pretty much. And the front <clears> door of the church is right here. And you marked X the spot right in front of the front door of the church where every Saturday two boys are throwing a softball in front of the church. What kind of sense does that make? That people are walking into the church, it's right here at the front door, in a parking lot here full of cars, throwing a baseball. Sooner or later, somebody was going to get hit or somebody's windshield was going to break, or the church windows were going to break. You want to talk about irresponsible? Both of you were irresponsible for allowing these kids to throw a baseball in front of a church at the front door. Makes no sense. So since I find both of you responsible, $250, I'm going to split the baby. Each of you responsible for half of the windshield, so I'm going to give you half. All right, judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $125. Good luck to both of you. All rise. Judge Karen has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $125. Listen, I'm sorry for what happened, and I would love to see you at church again. No, thank you. You'll get your money, but I can't go back to that church. Coming up. In all those years, how long did you say your daddy ran the business? Um, 20 plus years, Your Honor. Okay, did anybody ever bring him into court about any of his printing? Not that I know of. Okay, well, so you already starting out on the wrong foot. Network featuring dynamic judges and live legal programming. Well, we're not at your school, we're in my courtroom. Unique court shows. Where is any information about the company? Live legal news. That's what you should have done. And a commitment to justice. Either you tried or you did it. The next generation of court programming in one dynamic network. Justice Central. You're watching Justice Central. Stay tuned. Stay tuned to Justice Central. Coming up at 1230, watch Supreme Justice with Judge Karen, followed by Justice for All with Christina Perez. The verdict is in, right here on Justice Central. You're watching Justice Central. You're watching Supreme Justice with Judge Karen. Jesse Wesley is suing print shop owner Casey Taylor in the amount of $3,000. Mr. Wesley claims Mr. Taylor intentionally printed the wrong information on his business cards and says the defendant cost him valuable customers. Mr. Taylor says it was simply a machine error and claims Mr. Wesley turned down his offer to refund the money. Mr. Wesley, you're suing Mr. Taylor for $3,000, which is uh, for loss of income. Is that right? That is correct, Your Honor, okay. yes. What type of business are you in? I'm a tax preparer, Your Honor. Oh, okay. And so how do you know the plaintiff? Um, I own a printer service. Uh -huh. How long have you been doing that? Um, well, this is my dad business for about 20 plus years. Okay. Um, I took on. Um, How long have five, you been doing it? For about five plus years now. Oh, okay. Yes. So you have been having his company to make your business cards? Yes, he's been making my business cards for about seven years, Your Honor. Seven years. Yes. So his dad was making your cards before he took over the business? That's correct, Your Honor. Okay, so what happened this time when he made your business cards? Well, as usual, I ordered a big reprint of my business cards uh, from Casey, Your Honor. Okay. Um, and I order, I make a big order right before a big e uh, business expo. I'm a panelist on um, that I attract a lot of new clientele so from. So what are you giving people, flyers? I'm giving them my business cards, flyers, okay. posters. Uh, and, okay. Um, so I you gave him this order? Yes. Okay. So what went wrong with the order? Yes. The phone number um, on the business card, uh -huh. it was the wrong number. You put um, the wrong number down on the card. So what happened was, what we do, we, we changed our system. And with, with that, um, files, you know, was corrupted. Uh -huh. um, my employee there then inputted the information from scratch. Right. Um, so did you send it over to him for his approval? 
Um, no, this is something that I, I it was it was a quick fix right. um, with the template. It was very simple. Right. Um, well, I was it wasn't that simple because somebody messed up. <laughs> Coming up. In all those years, how long did you say your daddy ran the business? Um, 20 plus years, Your Honor. Okay, did anybody ever bring him in the court about any of his printing? Not that I know of. Okay, well, know. so you already starting out on the wrong foot. Supreme Justice is back with the case of Jesse Wesley, who is suing Casey Taylor for lost income. He know you were going to be uh, using this material at this expo? Yes, Your Honor. I've been doing this. This is my third year that I've been oh, doing so it. Oh, so you always order some extra materials for this particular event? That is correct, Your Honor. Oh, okay. Around the same time, for the same events. Okay. Casey knows this, and he knows how much new business I've been attracting. Now, in the past, has he sent you over the proof? No, Your Honor. I've been using the same template even before I was using Casey. With the, I was going through his father. I've had the same oh, information. Oh, so they never had to make changes. You I've, just say, run me off 500 of those on correct. the template you have. So there was no reason to look at the proof. That is correct, Your Honor. Okay. Had I known he was going to change it or there was an error or anything, I just would have liked to like, lay some eyes on it is all. Uh, okay, so then what happened? Uh, so a week after the expo, I gave everything out. I, an irate customer comes into my office and they're screaming and yelling at my assistant and I saying that I'm not returning any calls. Um, that I don't want to do any business with them, and I, it's not the type of business that I run. Any what does this person mean you're not returning calls? They said that they were calling a phone number, that, and they were leaving voice messages that uh, oh. uh, weren't being returned they to They thought that was your number? Correct. Oh, okay, but it wasn't? It was not, no. Well, I insisted that he must have been calling the wrong number because right. I call everybody back. It's just okay. the kind of business that I run. And he, he pulls out his phone, and he pulls out the card that he got from the expo. He saw me as a panelist on the expo, and he shows them to me. And that's when I see that the two numbers at the end of my business card are switched. Did you contact the defendant then? After I took care of the customer, yes, right. I immediately contacted so Casey. So what was that conversation like? Um, you know, he was very irate um, about the situation. Um, you know, I, I felt like it was very, uh, it wasn't intentional. Um, I didn't mean to do that. My, my employee didn't mean to do did, that. You know what? In all those years, how long did you say your daddy ran the business? Um, 20 plus years, Your Honor. Okay. Did anybody ever bring him into court about any of his printing? Not that I know of. Okay. Well, know. so you already starting out on the wrong foot. Judge Karen's verdict when Supreme Justice returns. So what did you ask him for any type of reparations for what had happened or what? Uh, your, your Honor, no. Uh, I offered for $400. I for offered what? that. Um, for for what he paid for for the business cards, but he did not he didn't take it for. He said he didn't want the four hundred. Right. Is that right? That is correct, Your Honor. I'm going to give some punitive damages here. That's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to give you the four hundred dollars because he offered you that which you paid, and I'm going to also um, find a thousand dollars in punitive damages because this was no way to run a business, and you need to learn your lesson that if you're going to run your business raggedy. You're going to have raggedy results. All right, I'm going to give you the $400 for the cost, and I'm going to give $1,000 in punitive damages. I'm ready to rule judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $1,400. Good luck to both of you. Judge Karen has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $1,400. I'm taking my $1,400. You cost me a lot of business. We're done. Look, I apologize for this. I hope we can do business in the future. 